our most bonononos <laughs> master of ceremonies. I would have said wonderful, but it might not have been Jamaican lady. <laughs> Your Excellency, Mrs. Janice Miller, Mr. Lloyd Wilkes, Ambassador Sharon Saunders, Mr. Granville Anderson, Dr. Alvin Curling, Mr. Gerald Johnson, representing Legacy Partners, Pastor Swaby, yeah. Dr. Pamela Appelt, Mrs. Valerie Steele, Diaspora Advisory Board Member, Mr. Lincoln Downer, staff of the, of the consulate here in Toronto, fellow Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, whether you're representing an organization or just here on your own, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. I want to thank you, High Commissioner, for your very warm and beautiful introduction. I'm not sure that it was me you were describing. <laughs> but it certainly has, together with the welcome that I've been given this evening, really made me feel a great warmth here. And um, it is a very real honor for me to be here with you in Toronto for the Canada launch of the Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference. As the Portfolio Minister responsible for Diaspora Affairs, I really do attach great importance to national engagements which seek to further strengthen and to tangibly, to concretely deepen the relations between you, our Diaspora, and our beloved Jamaica. Last August, I had the pleasure of sharing with many of you in this city my visions and plans in respect of the diaspora. And I also had the opportunity to hear from some great young people about their perspectives, and they have given us some great ideas as well. In fact, I see this evening a couple young people from an earlier session that we had this evening, and um, I actually want to pause and welcome you specifically as well. I'm glad you were able to stay over. Um, but. My interactions with young people, including this afternoon, really helped to broaden my understanding of the hundreds and thousands of Jamaicans who have chosen to live, work, and raise successive generations of Jamaicans in this country. So I want to seize this opportunity given to me today to once more publicly recognize the immeasurable and invaluable contributions made by you, or diasporans, in Canada not only in the education and health sectors in Jamaica, but in every aspect of Jamaican life. Your contributions have concretely contributed and positively impacted many, especially the underserved population right across the length and breadth of Jamaica. The Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference 2017 is themed, as you've all heard now, Partnering for Growth. This theme acknowledges the importance of working collaboratively to build our beloved Jamaica. Conference 2017 will present a platform to achieve our goal of deepening the involvement of Jamaicans overseas in transformational growth and nation building. As Jamaicans, we're known for our very strong sense of identity and affinity. We have a love and a real passion for all things Jamaican. My fellow Jamaicans, we really do need each other and we do need to work together to grow. We have to partner with each other if we do intend to attain the robust, sustainable and inclusive growth that is so important for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, the prospect and the process of strengthening the institutional mechanisms to engage the diaspora has begun in earnest. A diaspora engagement task force has been established by the Economic Growth Council with a focus on harnessing the skills, expertise, and the knowledge of our diaspora worldwide. As part of our efforts to streamline this process, the membership of this task force is broad-based, comprising various ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as diaspora representatives. The task force is led by Dr. David Panton, a well-known diasporian himself, and the task force is currently pursuing recommended growth initiatives contained in the EGC's call to action, such as 
the establishment of a fast track one-stop shop coordinating agency of all government agencies to address diaspora and investor requests and initiatives. Two, the implementation of the Global Immigration Service Card, which has also been proposed as one of the initiatives, and assessing generally how the relationship and how we can build institutions that it will deepen and optimize the relationship between Jamaica and the diaspora. I'm also pleased to inform that the institutional capacity of the ministry itself is being strengthened with the creation of a new diaspora affairs department within a broader diaspora and protocol affairs division. So we're adding resources to make sure that we can give more focused attention to the end execution of the entire spectrum of diaspora engagement activities and initiatives. Though still in its early stages, we're definitely in growth mode and building to serve you better. Fellow Jamaicans and friends, I am particularly buoyed by the enthusiasm which has been expressed so far by our diaspora, diaspora globally, as well as Jamaicans at home for this staging of the conference. I had the opportunity last month to lead a small delegation from my ministry to officially launch the conference in both Miami and New York. And the responses from both engagements has been positive, overwhelmingly positive, and one full of excitement. I'm therefore expecting good representation from these regions. And we are also getting very good feedback from the UK, even though we haven't formally launched there. What they've launched is their steering committee, and the activity of the committee alone makes us excited about what will happen there. This year's conference comes at a very significant juncture, coinciding with the commemoration of Jamaica's 55th anniversary of independence. 55 years of nationhood, as Consul General said earlier, is an important landmark. It's an important milestone to acknowledge, to take stock and celebrate our resilience and our achievements as a people. Furthermore, in recognition of the importance of the diaspora, the Ministry of Culture, Gender and Entertainment and Sport designated the theme celebrating Jamaicans at home and abroad for the real reason that we did want the diaspora to be a full part of our independence this year. This is why we sought to shift the date to align with our, well one of the reasons we shifted the date to align with independence in the hope that more persons can connect with that cultural expression of our identity. It is now the, the case that the ministry is working in partnership with the Jamaica 55 Secretariat of that ministry to promote the celebratory events and legacy projects of Jamaica 55 and to include it, of course, as part of the conference agenda. Two outstanding examples of that collaborative process, which are being also coordinated with our ministries, are the Adopt a Clinic initiative, which will support 100 clinics across the island of Jamaica, and the Pledge to Build campaign projects, which of course was launched by the education, Diaspora Education Task Force last year. Projects which will be highlighted in the conference to garner your increased support for Jamaica's health and education sectors. The Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference is designed to facilitate open dialogue, deepen the process of engagement, and define real and meaningful pathways for us to strengthen the established areas of cooperation and to expand into new and innovative avenues for partnership in areas of common interest to both Jamaica and our diaspora. We will share with you shortly, Mr. Donna will come to the stage, to share some of the details of the very rich and relevant conference program and the preparations on the way. It is my intention to ensure that we build on the achievements of past years and that coming out of this conference, we can create even more effective mechanisms for specific, measurable, and actionable outcomes aligned to people's priorities as enunciated by the government and diaspora interests. And these, of course, coalesce around, ultimately, the development of Jamaica land we love. Fellow Jamaicans, over the past year, Jamaica has recorded achievements worth highlighting. And I'm only going to mention a few. We committed to reducing the high levels of democracy as it re relates to the ease of doing business 
and our efforts are already bearing fruit, as Jamaica was named among the 10 most improved economies for doing business in the world in 2016. Jamaica's ranking has improved to 64th, so we still have work to do, but we're making, making progress. Consequently, we are ranked number one in the Caribbean in respect of ease of doing business, and this is fantastic. This improvement has, of course, resulted in increased employment opportunities for our people, with 21,900 jobs, or rather, 21,900 more Jamaicans employed in January 2017 over January 2016. Jamaica continues to be a leader in the Caribbean through the optimal use of our natural resources. Our energy sector has been diversified with inclusion of renewable energy sources, which have improved our generation capacity. And Jamaica was ranked number one in the Caribbean in 2016 as a regional leader in energy diversification. And in fact, we're ahead of target and we're actually adjusting our target from 20% in 2030 to 30% in 2030, because we're already at 17.5% renewables, and we're, so we're ahead of target, exactly. <laughs> and things like this, of course, will spur opportunities, opportunities for people to invest, opportunities to come back home, and um, I'm not gonna go down that path, because that will make the speech a whole lot longer. <laughs> but, um, but there are things to be excited about. Uh, as the world increasingly becomes a global village as well, the availability of and access to technology has become increasingly <coughs> essential. In the last year, we implemented 15 community access points, which allow communities to use the internet at minimal or no cost for educational and social purposes. And these aren't only based in Kingston, and they are open to open Wi-Fi hotspots at the Halfway Tree Transportation Center, but we're also opening hotspots in Ocho Rios, in Manchester, and in Hannover. So there are, there's a, a, a real push to ensure that we get everybody online. Public Wi-Fi networks will be a great avenue for this, and we continue to encourage, um, again, persons to, to get online and to get connected. As many of you would be aware, however, Jamaica experienced persistent heavy rains over the past month and these <coughs> ravaged several parishes. Clarendon was the hardest hit. And although the effects from these rains were severe, thankfully there was no reported loss of life. For that, we're grateful. Let me assure you that the government is working assiduously to not only assess the extent to which damage has done, but to put in place the steps necessary to correct the great infrastructural damage that has been done. We're getting prepared for what is going to be a very active hurricane season. And we know that we can continue to rely on your support in alleviating the suffering of persons who are affected. We used to say, I don't know how many of you were there, but I remember we used to say, June too soon, July stand by, August you must, September remember, October all over, June is no longer too soon, and it's not all over in October. So we, climate change is real for us, and it's actually one of the areas in which we work quite a bit with Canada, but um, we, will, we will count on your support uh, with much of the infrastructural uh, assistance that is needed. In closing, however, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to re-emphasize again on a more positive note that the conference is poised to be results oriented. I am urging all of you, yes, this is coming from the feedback, from the feedback. We've recognized, we've recognized that, um, that it's impossible to be everything to all people. Um, it is impossible to meet every need, every desire for every conversation and the time that is necessary for everything. But if we recognize that the conference is a starting point for some things and it's a coalescing point for others, it's a sharing point for some things and it's a developmental point for others. If we recognize that each body, each organization, each person can come away with that which is valuable to them, 
uh, provided we, the ministry, do our job as well in terms of ensuring there's a framework for follow-up, for implementation, for making sure that each session has outcomes that can then be measured and implemented and monitored, then we're going to have successes that build on successes. So we want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. We want you to share in Kingston, in the new and renewed energy around Kingston. If you follow our new mayor, Mayor Delroy Williams, at Delroy Williams, he, is, he uses the hashtag still believing, for those of you who are on Twitter, hashtag still believing. And um, he's engaging in some exciting beautification projects that we want you to come home and see, because then you are going to hashtag still believe. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward to welcoming you. And thank you again for your time, attention, and very warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Minister Johnson Smith. So I made some notes while she was speaking. And here are some words that have resonated with me that we've been saying um, since the beginning of the diaspora movement. How many people, but no, no, see, she, did, she did say that one, which I like, and it's sweet, like a Miss Louie. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how many people in this room attended the first conference? One, two, three. Four, five, six, more than seven. Yeah, uh, and there's some people there, and I, I, you know, I, I, I wanna kind of do that, but I wasn't really at the first one in flesh, but in spirit. <laughs> but can I hold my head up high and say I've attended all the subsequent conferences? And um, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, HCM Minister. And I know many people in this room have also been there too. So um, the Minister talked about sharing, she talked about development, she talked about framework, she talked about follow-up, she talked about measure rebels, and she talked about monitoring. These are words that we've been saying, and we are, we're, we're looking forward to even more tangible results from our attendance at the conference and how the conference can unite the silos of Jamaica that exist around the planet in order to um, enhance you know, what we do. Because many of us are doing very many things in Jamaica, a lot of us, but you know, we, we, we need to get our heads around the concept of pooling those resources that exist in so many places in order to be able to raise the bar on what we do. We know so every little, every little they come up here you now. But you know, think about muckles becoming, expanding, and the impact that, that there is. And we know the needs in our home and native land, Jamaica land we love, and we know all we say when we want to cuss and carry on. But those of us who live here, you know, we can see the differences even in this country, a developed country, and the challenges that this nation faces. So we ask you to keep things in perspective. Not expect say we are gonna do a galang yaso. We want you to understand perspective and don't make anything shake that love that we have for the nation and the contribution that we can make and that we continue um, to make. Um, we're streaming on Facebook. Follow the launch by going to jcgtoronto.ca. Share with others. Then say like, but I love more why you love it, right? Like, keep, keep going and spreading the word uh, about what we do. But we are going to hear more um, uh, uh, and thanks again, um, uh, Senator um, Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith for your presentation. We truly appreciate that. But um, before um, the Acting Director does for our Affairs Department, and a long time in the boat, you know, come to my yard um, two years ago when we were there, um, 
but in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, and Foreign Trade, we do have a presentation, Minister. So perhaps you can come back to the podium again. And I invite, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, 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 no. Yeah, no, it, it's coming, which is, which is next after this presentation to you by Marvin Watson, Jamaica National. Marvin? Alicia to the podium to make another presentation on behalf of the <laughs> consulate and staff in Toronto. We thank you for your work and contribution. You have a mighty ministry to manage, and you do know that there are more of us outside the country that live in any country. So our voice in the diaspora is, is, is strong, meaningful, motivated primarily by love of Jamaica land we love. So at this point, Mr. Lincoln Donner, Acting Director, Diaspora Affairs Department, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And um, yeah, Mr. Donner, as you're on your way up, this gentleman will finish his greeting of the minister and will continue after the event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Senator of the Honorable Kamina Johnson Smith, Her Excellency Mrs. Janice Miller, Mr. Lloyd Wilkes, Ambassador Sharon Saunders, MPP Granville Anderson, Dr. Alvin Curling, Mr. Gerald Johnson, Dr. Pamela Appelt, Mrs. Valerie Steele, Fellow Jamaicans, friends, good evening. Good evening. It is indeed my pleasure to share with you a snapshot of the Jamaica 55 Diaspora Conference. The conference promises to be exciting, engaging, and invigorating. Now, for a conference of this magnitude, it takes a lot of work, and we have a number of partners. Our colleague ministries, departments and agencies, the private sector, the Diaspora Advisory Board, the Diaspora Engagement Task Force of the Economic Growth Council, as well as academia. And of course, I can't forget to signal my appreciation for your support as well as the support of all Jamaicans across the United States, the United Kingdom, as well as Minister of the Middle East, we have been informed only earlier this week that about 16 persons from the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Qatar, will be making their way to Jamaica. And this is significant because it speaks to the vision of the Minister that will be expanded.